Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Could Christianity be so dumbed down that many will miss heaven? My guest is going to expose something that is perverse in Christianity. Hello, Sid Roth here with John Bevere. Now, most people assume a little baby, an innocent little baby, is born with discernment, knowing the difference between right and wrong, good and evil. Uh, what do you say, John? Well, that's the whole message here that I want to bring to the people today. Good or God? Is it synonymous? Because today, it seems to be. When you say good, people assume it's God. But yet, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 5 that the only way to recognize between good and evil is through discernment. If you look at King Solomon before he started his reign, he cried out to God, give me a heart to discern between good and evil. So if good is so obvious, straightforward, why do we have to have discernment to get it? And, and you know what the most amazing thing to me is? The revelation you're about ready to hear is probably one of the most important that you will get between now and the time you go home or Jesus returns. This revelation came in a supernatural fashion to John Bevere, and you have a best-selling book, a million and a half in print, uh, The Bait of Satan. Uh, everyone's heard of John Bevere in, in this book, but it took a supernatural revelation from God for him to get this. What happened? Well, this all began years ago. In the late 90s, I was flying to Sweden, and I remember landing, and the, my host picked me up and said, John, you don't know this, but a very, very famous woman, she was globally known, was killed last night in a tragic automobile accident. I was shocked beyond words. She was pretty, she had a great personality, she loved her fans, and she was using her beauty and her influence to help victims of landmines help victims that were poor and needy and social injustice victims. And so I remember watching this news about people just weeping at her gates, weeping in the nation. And I'm grieving for like two or three hours and I think I'm speaking to 6,000 people tonight. I got to get ready for the service. And I turned the TV off and said, I felt like in my grieving, I was in error. So I got down at the end of my bed at Sweden. I literally knelt at the foot of the bed and I said, God, I feel like I'm in error. What's wrong? And I heard so clearly, and this is the supernatural aspect of it. The Lord said, read Revelations 18. I heard that so clearly. So I started reading Revelations 18 and I got down to the eighth or ninth verse and it said, in the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow, for strong is the Lord that judges her. And I'm telling you, I felt like a bucket of ice water hit me in the face, because I'm a fan of this woman. And I said, God, how could you ever use that scripture to speak to me about this woman? I said, God, God, everything she's done, she's helping the landmine victims, the, 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 the poor. And the Lord said, she's flaunted her adultery to the whole world. She's openly rebelled against the house that she chose to submit to. I said, but God, but all the good she's done. And I heard this so clearly. And this is what changed my life, Said, The Holy Spirit said, son, it was not the evil side of the tree of knowledge of good and evil that Eve was drawn to. It was the good side. And when I heard that, I flew over in my Bible to Genesis 3, and I saw these words. When the woman saw the tree was good, it was pleasant, and what is desirable to make her wise. And I dropped my Bible on the bed, and I went, oh, my, my. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, son, there is a good that is very rebellious to me. And right then, I saw all the way to the fact 
that the man of sin, the man of rebellion, that's going to deceive the nations, he's going to have a good that's scary good, but it's going to be perfectly rebellious to God. And so out of that, what I started realizing is that the best way that the enemy can deceive people, because Jesus, the apostles, they all spoke about deception in the last of the last days. In fact, Jesus said, if possible, even the elect are going to be deceived. And so I started realizing the person who's deceived believes they're on the side of truth when in reality they're not. How is the enemy going to deceive even the elect? It's through a good. So, so what you're saying is that the enemy is going to wrap deception, which you would obviously know, with a package of good. Isn't that's in effect what you're saying happened to Eve in the garden? Well, the Bible doesn't say that Satan can transform himself as an angel of light. It says he does transform himself as an angel of life, and so do his messengers. So there is not only Satan transforming himself into an angel of light, his messengers, and the message of the messengers. So there's a message out there, hey, if it's good, it's God. No, it isn't, Sid. There is sometimes a distinction between good and God. You had, a, you had a revelation in, that in the last days this deception would occur, the, uh, d the discernment between good and evil. Malachi points it out, the book of Malachi. The book of Malachi said in the final days, the days right before the coming of the Lord, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between the righteous and the wicked until the fire of refinement comes. So in other words, there's a time period. But the wheat and the tares that Jesus talks about. The wheat and the tares are the exact same thing, that you're going to have the righteous and the wicked together and everybody's going to think they're all serving God. It's going to get tricky. And it's going to get trickier the closer we get to the return of the Messiah. Speaking of trickiness, in the grace holiness debate, John has some interesting answers. We'll be right back. Reserve your place and get ready to experience Israel, the land of the supernatural with Sid and Joyce Roth. November 24th to December 3rd, 2015. It's the perfect temperature and the land is calling your name. Visit the Mount of Olives, the Garden of Gethsemane, Calvary, and take communion at the Garden Tomb. Visit the Upper Room, Qumran, the home of the Dead Sea Scrolls, and receive ministry as you travel across the Sea of Galilee. If you like, you can be baptized in the Jordan River, the Jewish way, the way Jesus was baptized, and so much more. The price for this 10-day adventure includes round-trip airfare from New York City, hotel, all taxes, all tips included. Don't miss out on going with Sid Roth on this Israel tour for this special low price. Please specify the Sid Roth Israel trip when you call or visit SidRoth.org forward slash Israel. We now return to It's Supernatural! I Sid Roth here with John Bevere, and the Holy Spirit spoke to you about a recalibration message. What does that mean? Well, if you've got an instrument and you're measuring something and that measurement's not calibrated correctly, the measurement that you think you're getting is not what you're getting. The Bible, I was just reading this morning, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, let us pay very close attention to the words we've heard lest we drift away. Now, when I was a boy, I used to fish because I grew up in a lake. If I didn't anchor, I'd be fishing away, and 30 minutes later, I'd look up and not even recognize the shoreline. What happened? I drifted. Drifting doesn't happen consciously. It happens unconsciously. If we don't pay close attention to what the New Testament tells us, then what can happen is we can drift, and now we can start assuming what is good, what is really not good in God's eyes, to be good in our eyes, and now we start embracing truths that we think God's on the side of, or God has you know, instituted, that really He hasn't. I, I have to tell you, when I heard you talking about a major area of recalibration, uh, and this may surprise you, the difference between Savior and Lord. Explain that. Well, in the Church of America, we have basically desired to get people to pray a sinner's prayer. 
which is basically to receive Jesus. We almost appeal to people, will you just give Jesus a chance? Will you give your life to, to the Savior Jesus? Will you pray this prayer with me? Yet the word Savior appears 36 times in the Bible. The word Lord appears over 7,800 times in the Bible. Where do you think God puts the emphasis? The Bible never says that if thou shalt confess the Savior Jesus, the Bible says if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus. Jesus made the statement, why do you call me Lord, yet you don't do what I say? So Lord means supreme in authority. So when we confess him as Lord, we say, I am putting myself under your supreme authority. You know, I, I, I was in a room filled with leaders, 250 pastors, and I said to them, how many of you can see the rich young ruler strutting up to Jesus? He's got his Armani robe on, his Rolex sundial watch. He's got this little attitude. So what do I do to get saved? And they all raised their hands. And I said, can we look at what the scripture says? Mark chapter 10, it says there came running to Jesus and kneeling down. I literally ran across the platform. It was a very large platform. I slid to my knees and I grabbed the guy that was helping me. And I said, what do I do to get saved? I said, would you say this guy had a desire to get saved? And they all said, yes. And I said, but desire is not enough. I said, because Jesus looked into this man's life and he saw something that was more important to him than God. And that was his money. With other people, it can be their girlfriend, their boyfriend, it could be sports, it could be this. I said, but this guy, Jesus was more concerned about him finishing well than starting well. And I said, so Jesus looked at him, he said, hey, there's one thing that's gonna be down the road. You're gonna say, hey, you're my Lord, but this is gonna call you. In other words, money's gonna call you a different direction. My Lordship's gonna steer you one way, your money's gonna steer you another way. I need you to make the decision now, which one is it gonna be? And so Jesus says, sell what you have, because right now the only way to break this thing off of your life is just let it go. And the guy, when he hears it, walks away sad and sorrowful. And Jesus didn't run after him and say, wait a minute, Proverbs 19, 17 says, he who gives to the poor lends the Lord and that which he's given the Lord will repay. That's a promise. And I'm sure if Jesus would have run to him and said that, that might have convinced him. But said Jesus never used the blessings, the perks, the benefits of the gospel to entice people to follow him. He just said, follow me, not because of what I can do for you, but because of who I am. I have to ask you this, because a survey was done and the question was, what does grace mean? But the results of the survey are very important for people to understand. Explain that. It was a heartbreaking survey. Over 5,000 Christians were polled in the United States. These are Bible-believing Christians. The survey asked, give three or more one-word definitions or descriptions of the grace of God. The overwhelming response was salvation. Second one was a free gift, and third one was forgiveness of sins. I think the fourth one was love of God. Now, I'm so glad Americans understand that, okay, that we're saved by grace. Those are all good grace. things. Yeah, it, true things. Yeah. We're saved by grace, only by grace. You can't earn it, you can't merit it, and it forgives our sins. However, this is the tragedy of the survey. Only 2%, the actual figure was 1.9% of those that were surveyed said that grace was God's empowerment. Yet that is exactly how God represents His grace because God said to the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is sufficient for you for my power works best in your weakness or human inability. If you look at Peter, Peter says grace be multiplied to you as His divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Grace is in God's empowerment that gives me the ability to do what I otherwise couldn't do in my own ability. I couldn't live a godly life before I was a Christian. I used to read the Bible and come under tremendous conviction because I was a good sinner. And yet, I didn't have the power to change. But when the grace of God came into my life, not only was I forgiven, not only was I saved, but the grace, that same grace empowered me to be transformed, to not be a man who looks at pornography and lusts after other women, but to be a man who could sit there and be free from it and look at a woman for the fact that she was their daddy's little girl, not the fact that she was a piece of meat. And so grace changed what I couldn't change. When we come back, I want to find out what true biblical holiness is. Don't go away. Announcing an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Call now and get John Bevere's multimedia course, Good or God. It includes his easy-to-use interactive book with six weeks of devotions and discussion questions, plus six teaching sessions on two DVDs and three audio CDs so you can listen in your car, office, or home. Plus, you receive John's bonus audio CD teaching, Deliverance from Sin. The entire course is yours for a donation of $74. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9318. Through this one-of-a-kind multimedia course, you will 
you'll learn to clearly discern God's perfect will for your life over that which seems good but is only Satan's counterfeit. Be empowered to fulfill your God-given purpose and destiny and receive Holy Spirit power to avoid the coming end time deception. Gain supernatural wisdom, direction, and favor with your finances, health, and relationships. Enter into greater intimacy with God than ever before. The six-week course includes extra material for interactive study with insightful questions, weekly devotions, scriptures to reflect on, applications to activate this teaching in your life. Plus, receive John Bevere's special audio CD teaching, Deliverance from Sin. John Bevere shares his story of a personal struggle with addiction that lasted for years, even after becoming a believer in Jesus. Through this powerful message, you will discover how deception tries to enter your life. Learn supernatural keys to overcome all sin in your life. Don't miss out on getting this exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience, John Bevere's multimedia course, Good or God. It includes his easy-to-use interactive book with six weeks of devotions and discussion questions, plus six teaching sessions on two DVDs and three audio CDs so you can listen in your car, office, or home. Plus, you receive John's bonus audio CD teaching, Deliverance from Sin. The entire course is yours for a donation of $74. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9318. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9318 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Uh, and, you know, my head is still rattling over this survey that was just done by Christians that 98% of Christians in America do not understand that grace gives us the enabling empowerment to overcome sin. It blows my mind, John. Well, and here's why it's important. It's not just a knowledge thing. You know, the Bible makes it so clear, Sid, that you can't have anything from God unless you believe. I mean, Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes. Why is one person who, you got two people, they've both been forgiven, one's going to go to heaven, one's not going to go to heaven, even though their sins were paid for. Why? Because that person didn't believe. But you can't believe what you don't know. So if 98% of the Christians in America don't know that grace is God's empowerment, that means 98% of the Christians in America are trying to live godly, holy in their own ability. That's why they're so frustrated. Because if I try to live godly in my own ability, one of two things are going to happen. I'm either going to become a hypocritical legalist or I'm going to become a loosey-goosey, make up some strange doctrine that grace covers all the sin that I love and I'm standing on very thin ice person. But when we realize that Hebrews says that we need grace. This is exact quote from Hebrews. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. Grace empowers me. So I believe for that empowerment. I put on my Lord Jesus Christ and throw off the old and believe for that empowerment. And that's what produces the transformation. And Sid, Paul tells us that right before Jesus comes back, perilous times are gonna occur. Now, think about it. His times were perilous. He was beaten with rods. He was whipped. He was stoned, right? But he looks at my day and calls it perilous. What's going to make my day perilous? He tells us. He said men are still going to love themselves. They're still going to be unthankful. They're still going to be unholy. They're still going to disobey their parents. They're still going to be unforgiving. But they're going to have a form of godliness, but they're going to deny its power. Hmm. They're going to have a form of Christianity, but they're going to deny the grace of God that gives them the ability to change from being unholy to holy, unthankful to thankful, unforgiving to forgiving. Because why? They're trying to do it in their own ability. So what's happened now, our leaders are so frustrated because people are hurting. People are hurting. This is what I hear from leaders, pastors, they'll look at me and they'll go, but John, people are just hurting. I'm saying that if we don't give the answer and we don't tell people that grace will empower you to live godly, we're just going to give them a positive, uplifting message while the cancer of sin is still eating away at their life. I don't want to be a doctor preacher that just tells people everything's okay when it's not okay. I want to be somebody who can come in there and give them what they need so they can believe and be set free from that cancer of sin that's been eating away at them. Because God wants us to not only be positionally free from sin, He wants us to live free from sin. All right, there's a flip side here that is so important. Why have we lost a healthy fear of God? What is a healthy fear of God? I think it's because people are so terrified by the word fear. They go, hey, God's not giving me a spirit of fear. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You have just confused 
the spirit of fear with the fear of the Lord. My Bible tells me in the New Testament that we perfect holiness in the fear of the Lord. My Bible tells me that we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So what's the fear of the Lord and what's the spirit of fear? Well, you can see it differentiated when Moses leads the children of Israel out of Egypt. He comes to the mountain, God's presence comes, which you're never going to have God's presence without true holiness, the fear of the Lord. And the people run away. And the reason they ran away is they didn't have the fear of the Lord in their hearts. And Moses looked at him and said, do not fear. So don't be scared of God. I mean, Jesus' message, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. God's always saying, do not fear. Moses says to them, do not fear. That's the spirit of fear. He said, because God's come to test you. What's the test? That his fear may be in you so you may not sin. Wait a minute, Moses, you just contradicted yourself. Don't fear because God's come to see if his fear is in you. He's not contradicting himself. He's differentiating between being scared of the Lord and the fear of the Lord. There's a difference. The person who is scared of God is something to hide. What does Adam do in the garden? He runs from the presence of God. Because why? He's got now the spirit of fear. But the person who fears God, they're terrified to be away from God. Hmm. So if you want a definition, the first primary definition of the fear of the Lord, it's, it's to be scared. No, not scared. It's to be terrified to be away from God. If you look at Lucifer, he led worship in heaven, but he didn't fear God. So iniquity was formed in him. If you look at a third of the angels, they're in glory, but they didn't fear God and they're no longer in glory. Every single creature around his throne throughout eternity, I believe is going to be tested in the two major things, the fear of the Lord and the love of God. Those are the two forces that keep us on the road of life. Moses wanted the presence of God above anything, yes, above he did. everything. You want the presence of God. Tell me about the presence. You know, Moses, think about it, had the best life a human being had on the planet. He had the biggest house, the wealthiest grandfather. He had servants. He had everything he wanted, but yet he left it. Israel was abused by that same society. They have stripes on their backs. Their children are being put to death. They come out and they're constantly saying, let's go back to Egypt. It was better for us. Why? What's the difference? Moses longed for the presence of God. Israel longed for what God could do for them. They wanted a promised land. See, Moses, God actually offered him. He said, hey, go ahead, go to the promised land. I'm going to send an angel, but I'm not going. Now, if God would have said that to Israel, if they would have taken Egypt without an angel, they would have taken the promised land with an angel. I assure you of it. But Moses said, if your presence doesn't leave us in this place of suffering, this place of lack, this wilderness, I'm not leaving and don't take us out of here. Because what Moses was communicating to God is, if I have to choose... I would rather have your presence over your promises. Israel wanted his promises over his presence. We're after the promises and not the presence. When we have the presence, the promises are there. It's called favor. I mean, my brain keeps going tilt on some of the teaching that's relevant today that is based on prophecy that says there'll be deception in the last days. That was the temptation of Satan with Jesus. Flesh, first one, rock. God wants you, doesn't the Bible say, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or see begging for bread? There's your bread, convert it. The next one was everything your eyes can behold, the, 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 the lust of the eyes, all the kingdoms of the world, just worship me. Worshiping is just who we obey, not who we sing to. Our greatest form of worship is obedience and that comes out of a heart that fears God. Is Jesus your Savior or your Lord? I want you to say a prayer with me, but mean it. This is going to make the difference between knowing him or knowing about him. Repeat after me. Dear God, out loud, dear God, I'm a sinner. Against you and you alone have I sinned, and I'm so sorry. I make you my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, give me the enabling power to have your presence wherever I go. Come and live inside of me. Amen. Amen. Mean it. Believe it. Do it. Yeah. 
Have you seen how fast the moral compass of the world has disintegrated? Many believers are preparing for hard times with food and water, but missing something that will trump all other preparations. They are not preparing spiritually. The battle is not in the natural, but the supernatural. John Bevere has received the supernatural keys that will help you prosper and be a spiritual victor 24-7 in your life, ministry, business, and in all your relationships. Announcing an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Call now and get John Bevere's multimedia course, Good or God. It includes his easy-to-use interactive book with six weeks of devotions and discussion questions, plus six teaching sessions on two DVDs and three audio CDs so you can listen in your car, office, or home. Plus, you receive John's bonus audio CD teaching, Deliverance from Sin. The entire course is yours for a donation of $74. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9318. Through this one-of-a-kind multimedia course, you will learn to clearly discern God's perfect will for your life over that which seems good but is only Satan's counterfeit. Be empowered to fulfill your God-given purpose and destiny and receive Holy Spirit power to avoid the coming end time deception that will overtake the world. Gain supernatural wisdom, direction, and favor with your finances concerning your health and in all your relationships. Enter into greater intimacy with God than ever before. The six-week course includes extra material for interactive study with insightful questions for individual or group discussions, weekly devotions, weekly verses of scriptures for reflection, weekly applications to activate this teaching in your life. Plus, receive John Bevere's special audio CD teaching, Deliverance from Sin. John Bevere shares his story of a personal struggle with addiction that lasted for years even after becoming a believer in Jesus. Through this powerful message, you will discover how deception tries to enter your life. Learn supernatural keys to overcome all sin in your life. Understand how to pursue holiness without legalism. There is coming a demonic onslaught that will be unprecedented. God says, the love of most will grow cold, but those that prepare spiritually will stand. True biblical holiness will put a protective shield around you that will make you impenetrable to the enemy. It is the key to intimacy with God, and it opens every provision from heaven on earth. This interactive course is the best preparation for you in your house. I want you to do this course as a family project. I want you to do it in your Bible studies. I want it shouted from the rooftops. Don't miss out on getting this exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience, John Bevere's multimedia course, Good or God. It includes his easy to use interactive book with six weeks of devotions and discussion questions, plus six teaching sessions on two DVDs and three audio CDs so you can listen in your car, office, or home. Plus you receive John's bonus audio CD teaching, Deliverance from Sin. The entire course is yours for a donation of $74. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9318. In addition, those that get this course come under the protective covering of Genesis 12:3. God promises to bless those who bless the Jewish people. All prophets are poured into Jewish ministry. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9318 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. When I interview Gordon Robertson for our radio program, I'm not exaggerating. There was a river of healing, and I'm reminded in Ezekiel. Ezekiel says, wherever that river goes, there is lachaim, there is life. So I'm telling you, sickness, demons, you're on notice. The river is here. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide. 